Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran aka The Retro Lad here, back with another video. And I've got a little kind of book review thing for you. Um, you may remember some time ago I looked at the Video Games Hardware Handbook by Retro Gamer. And what many people don't realise is there's actually kind of two separate editions. There's the brown one, which is the one I reviewed a while back. And this is the blue one. And each of the handbooks has different machines in it. So really you need to own both of them if you want to sort of have the full review of every kind of computer and console out there. And this one is, you'll be able to see um, is a special edition apparently because what they've actually done is they've, they've reprinted the original blue one, made some additions to it, updated some of the articles, stuff like that, which is really nice. And you see it has stuff like the Mega Drive in it, the Neo Geo, the Game Boy's in there, the Atari 7800. Mega CD32, um, Amstrad CPC, there's lots of <coughs> well-known popular machines in there. Um, so I thought we'd have a little look through it so you can get a, a, a feel of, of, of what's in it. It's a big hefty thing, I'll show you how thick it is here as well actually. So yeah, you can see it's pretty damn thick. So although it might seem, I suppose, initially expensive at £10, what you get a lot for your money. I mean, it is, it was really, you know, it's hard to call it, you know, they call these booker zines and it is, you know, more to the book side of things because it is so huge. So I'll put it there on that side and try to run Windows updates in the background here. So, and you know how long they can take sometimes. So let's get into it. So usual index telling us what's, uh, What's in the magazine? A nice big picture of the Atari 7800 here. Starts off with the CPC. There's interviews all the people. We've even got a little, little interview with uh, Alan Sugar himself there. Pokemon Mini, quite an obscure little thing, but I, I, I think they're probably more successful in Japan than anywhere else. The Mega Drive, one of the best selling consoles of all time. And, you know, and probably arguably the best console of all time. Certainly as far as its library of games is concerned, I don't think there's anything that touches the Mega Drive at all. Over 10 Mega Drive games. Uh, not a list I'd agree with, because Streets of Rage 2 should be number one. But that's a good list. Vic 20. A bit on the old Vic. I used to like these. I said it before, but um, this is actually one thing I missed in the past that they did in Retro Gamer is these uh, kind of spreads. PC Engine GT. So specifically looking at the handheld version of the, the Japanese console. Nice little image here that shows the links, the Game Gear and the PC GT next to each other. You can see the size difference. Best of British is an article focusing on uh, British home computers mainly. Uh, I, I think it's a shame that it didn't sort of look, look a little bit further afield than that. Um, I remember suggesting at the time that the Jaguar should have been in this article mainly because it was the last games console to be developed in Britain. In fact, hardly any ever have been, so. PlayStation. Not a lot to say about the PlayStation, really. Amiga. Nice big article on the Amiga. And the best games. Game.com, um, miserable failure of a handheld, uh, quite a cool idea but really badly implemented and as soon as you play on one you find out just how bad it is, I only played on one once but that was more than enough. The Auric, uh, strange compute the Auric, um, brought out to compete with the Spectrum, had some very early success 
sold very well in France in particular in the early days and then just kind of disappeared into nothing. It wasn't helped by the fact I believe that the hardware had some quite serious bugs. But it is funny how machines can do that sometimes. The Dragon 32 was a bit like that, it had an initial burst of success and then uh, just disappeared. And the Microvision, the, the very first uh, handheld games console. If anyone tells you it was the Game Boy, they're wrong. It was the Microvision. Article on Japanese computers, the ones you sort of didn't get here, like the NEC PC88, Sharp 68000, uh, Fujitsu FM Towns, computers like that. Uh, the Spectrum 128K, the uh, the beautiful toast rack, the most desirable model of the Spectrum. They go for quite big prices now on eBay. Some 128 only games worth looking at. ColecoVision. Big article on the Coleco. Nice console. The controller's a bit rubbish, but there are um, alternative controllers you can get. The best one is the, if you can get hold of the quick shot joystick, that's easily the best one. It makes the, makes the console so much better, and it's shown because it has such brilliant games, but they made such a rubbish controller for it. Especially good at arcade ports in the early years. There's the Apple II. A computer that was very, very successful in America, not so much in Europe. The venerable Game Boy. different models Simon um, quite a strange choice for inclusion I suppose but um, interesting nonetheless got it by Ralph Bear of course the Atari 5200 the uh, follow up to 2600 didn't do particularly well only ended up being released in America we never saw it in the rest of the world I have played the one in real life and things bloody huge. You think the original Xbox is big, and you've seen nothing until you've seen Atari 5200. Uh, Amstrad CPC 6128, the most desirable Amstrad, mainly because it has the disk drive, but also the 128K of memory. Looking at that. The Game Mate that we knew in the UK as the Cheetah Game Mate. I remember seeing these being sold in my local game shop, Software Plus, and I remember thinking they were quite cool actually at the time. I got to play a, a little gold one. I thought they were quite nice. Um, I still would like to add one to my collection, but I've never managed to find one for a decent price, because they seem to go for big money these days, sadly. Atari 800XL. So an article focusing purely on the best-selling member of the Atari 8-bit range. Article on controllers, which is pretty cool. We all had our favourites. The good old Atari CX40, probably the most famous controller ever. I had a lot of years using them, that's for sure. Jag pad that people seem to criticise a lot, and then when they actually play on it, realise it's not that bad. Mega CD thirty two, another console that had some very early success before fading away. I just had another machine. The thing problem with the Mega CD thirty two was the demise of Commodore themselves, rather than um, the machine losing popularity. It's a shame that Commodore went the way they did because. Uh, it was quite a nice idea, the CD32, and it was it was doing rather well. I remember it selling very well when I worked for Game. The Sinclair QL. Sinclair's entry into the business market that um, was riddled with problems. 
They even look at some games for the QL, which is quite cool. Not really known as a games machine, but it's nice to know there are some pretty interesting titles out there for it. Neo Geo AES, probably needs no introduction. Super powerful arcade hardware turned into a home console with ridiculously expensive games that we all used to drool over in uh, CMVG back in the day. And some of its best games, including excellent titles like Windjammers there. Easily one of my favourite uh, Neo Geo titles. The Sam Coupe, a mach another machine I remember kind of drooling over a bit in the magazines when I first heard about it. The idea of a Super Spectrum was, I think, appealing to a lot of people. It's a bit yellow, that one in that photo, blimey. Um, but it kind of missed the mark. It was too late to mark it, and you know, everyone promised it was going to be basically as good as the ST, and it was riddled with problems. And uh, it was relaunched a couple of times before just completely fading away, which is a shame. If it had been a bit earlier, I think it could have been quite successful. Um, Marty Goldberg's brilliant uh, article on the Studio 2, a console we didn't get in in the UK, but it has an amazingly interesting story behind it and a very iconic look. There's a scream 70s at you. Really, really interesting article that. It's um, one of my favourite articles of recent times, to be honest. It's really, really in-depth and really enthralling. A look at uh, handhelds, which is quite cool. Which says the best one of all the links. Right the way through the ages. The uh, another failed console. There's quite a few in this this magazine. The Amstrad GX four thousand. Just excuse me a moment. My kitty is trying to. My little kitten's trying to jump into the view of the camera, and I'm trying to stop her. Perfect 10 games, it's not hard to be perfect 10 games on the GX4000, believe me. I wrote a good article on it for Retro Gaming myself. Archimedes, another favourite of schools everywhere. I do remember using them at school and playing get some quite cool games on them. My kitten's decided she's going to walk into the picture, I think, in a minute. I also remember I had a friend with an Archimedes, used to swear blind all the time about how much better it was than my ST and my friend's Amiga. There's my kitten, well done to you. And uh, yep, yeah, and all we could say in response was, "But where's your games?" Because though the Archimedes did have some pretty damn good games, the stuff like Starfighter Three Thousand, it just didn't have the um, because it wasn't it didn't have the mass market success of the Atari ST or the or the Amiga for that matter. You know, um, it didn't have the game to catalog either. Famicom Disk System, interesting uh, combination between the you know the the standard Nintendo Famicom and a disk drive. Be able to play more stuff. Twin Famicom, they called it also. And the best article in the whole magazine, not that I'm biased or anything because I wrote it, on the Atari 1700 Pro System, one of my proudest moments in my writing career when I, I got this, did this article and it was featured on the cover of Retro Gamer. Good look at the uh, so interviews with Kurt Vendel, um, Homebrew Perry Thorente, there's uh, also David Dent who did Ninja Golf, my good friend Chuck PV, all interviewed in that article. Top 10 arcade conversions of the console. There's the iconic Sinclair ZX80, the real kind of, although it wasn't the first Sinclair computer, it was the kind of one that kind of put them on the map, so to speak. And uh, led to obviously the ZX81 and so on and so on. I believe it or not, it did actually have some games on it as well, I think. As it goes into that much, it does have a little a little bit about the games. Sega 32X, yes, another failed console. Or an add-on in this case. 32X, you know, had actually had some very good games, just didn't have many of them. But the games that are on it are actually pretty damn good. Especially Star Wars Arcade, I quite like that one a lot. The uh, Acon Electron. Funny actually, because uh, in the latest issue of Retro Gamer, there's an article on the Acon Electron, so the timing's quite funny. Also, it's a very nice looking computer, the Electron. I've never actually 
really played on one much. I've, I've had the odd go on them at retro events, but I've not got a lot of experience with it, but it's not massively different to the BBC, but I think it's a much nicer looking computer. And that is it. So that's a little look at the um, the retro game of video game hardware handbook. It's a really big to tome. It's um, well worth picking up. Um, there's loads in there. We spent ages reading it. Yeah. So if you're if you're a retro fan, then um, I seriously suggest getting down to WH Smiths, which is where I brought mine. No problem. They had quite a few copies in. Picking it up, or you can order it through the Imagine website, which I actually will link in the comments below for those um, interested. Um, hope you enjoyed this little look at this uh, great book of zine, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.